Hello guys, welcome back to the third part of the AWS Theta Architecture project. So here, uh, in our last two videos, what we saw, we had uh, set up all the uh, resources, whatever you see in this diagram. We had uh, these public subnets, two public subnets and private subnets. In our last video, we saw how to create and set up the NAT gateway so that we can access to the private subnet. Okay. And, and update the main route table like the default route table and through that how we can connect to the internet and uh, update and install the softwares so in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the application load balancer how we'll see uh, today we'll see uh, how we can write the code for the load balancer we'll see how the load balancer works so let's go ahead and write the code if you have not yet subscribed my channel, please do subscribe now so that you'll get notified whenever I add more videos on automations. Okay, so if I go to the um, load balancer sections here, uh, to, you have to use the resource sections of AWS underscore LB. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and check uh, the section here. Uh, if I go to the uh, terraform.io page, uh, just go ahead and just go to the EC2 sections here and you will find the EC2 uh, that ELB that is the elastic load balancing okay just go right here and you can see the resource as AWS underscore LB get this and uh, based on that you have to design and write based on your requirement so what I have done here I have just written uh, the name of the like the elastic load balancer and the internal has just given false you can just put it here or by default it will be false i'm not going to put it in internal and the load balancer type i have used as applications as you know there are three types of load balancer like application network and gateway load balancer so which load balancer you need you have to put it there and based on that you have to choose the options you can see here for application load balancer this is the block and for network load balancer this is the block okay and uh, all this uh, information is available in the Terraform page, documentation page. Okay, now what have we used here? A load balancer type, application, and the security groups. I'm going to use the security groups which was created as part of the security resources here. AWS underscore security group. Okay, so that is what it's going to create it. So I have used the AWS underscore security underscore group dot allow underscore tls dot id the security group id is being added to the load balancer so here i'm going to use and going to add multiple subnets that means minimum a load balancer remember a load balancer is required minimum of two subnets to work otherwise it will not work minimum two so that's why i have created two subnets and that two subnets by using this for loop going to fetch the subnets public subnets created under this section this resource block so two public subnets will be created under this and i'm going to fetch the two public id and associate and attach to this load balancer okay these two subnets will be created so for subnet in aws underscore subnet dot public colon I'm going to use this subnet and this is the one dot id so it is clear now you can see the two subnets have been added here now if you see here uh, as we need to create the load balancer we need a target group to be created prior to prior to create a load balancer we need the target group so we have a resource sections you can see here aws underscore lb underscore target group this target group we are going to see what is the port what is the protocol to be used the target type instance or IP or whatever so I have used instance here and which VPC uh, we are going to put it we are going to put in our custom VPC ID and there is also we have given a health check you can see the health check threshold we have given 3 unhealthy threshold 10 time at 5 interval given as 10 and the path where you want to do the health check i have given it here root okay and the port is 80. 
so this is what about the target group the target group is created now what we need we need to attach the server which server you want to add into the load balancer you have to attach that into the target group so we have a resource section it's called the resource block called aws underscore lb underscore target underscore group underscore attachment you can get it from the terraform io documentation page and here we have the target group arn so we share the target group arn we need to add into the attachment sections we can get it from the target group this one we are going to add the arn so we can get this attribute sections from the resource block of this Terra, Terra uh, from IO and you'll get from the source block of this target on script group. Okay, and so you can see here the target ID. The target ID is nothing but our the instance ID. We are going to add it here in the attachment. So the instance ID, how we'll get it? We'll just have to add the instance resource block that AWS underscore instance and the instance resource name dot wave and we have used here the count dot index because we have two instances two public instances which need to be added or attached to the target group of the load balancer okay this is what and the port number 80 and uh, as we need um, the load balancers and the target we have to add the listener to listen the uh, traffic right listen the balance load balance and all so we have to add the resource block called aws underscore lb underscore listener okay and here load balancer arn so you have to get the load balancer arn this time aws underscore lb dot alb dot arn this is what is written here and the port he protocol http and default action is to forward so where is forwarding to the target group okay the listener which will listen the traffic it will listen the uh, customer request it will uh, get the traffic input input and then forward to the target group and then check and uh, work accordingly okay this is what only you have to write for our lb okay for application load balancer okay so let me go ahead and copy all this uh, whatever is i just explained to you uh, go to our project folder okay so, so let me log into the server uh, so this is where I have written the project. Okay, and it is into the Terraform. This is the project folder. Okay, and here I have written all the Terraform files. Now let me just go ahead and add create a file called uh, alb.tf. Put the files. Uh, put the data. Uh, the code over here. What of the code I just explained to you? Everything I just put it over here okay now and you have to be, be careful whenever you're writing and uh, correlating everything because you need to understand that whenever you're writing any resource and getting any attributes uh, using any uh, attributes to get that particular resource details you have to make sure that you are using the appropriate name of that resource block to fetch the resource details okay uh, if you do some mistake then it will throw error because uh, see you can see I'll just give you an example here uh, if you can see here AWS underscore subnet so I'm going to use the public if you go to the subnet sections here right we have the name as public so if I go and check here AWS instance here and the name of the AWS instance I've given as a wave if I go and ec2.tf you can see it's given as wave now you understood how to write that one okay go ahead and I just added it. So what we need, we need to apply. Let's go ahead and apply it. Okay. So what I'll do, use Terraform apply, use auto approve, hit enter. Just wait for a few seconds and uh, it will get created. So it is going to create uh, five, all these things. One to change, okay. Just wait for a few seconds. So here it is. So five resources have been added and one changed. So let's see whether uh, our LB is created or not. Okay, let's go ahead uh, to our AWS console and you'll find 
the application load balancer under the EC2 sections. Okay, and then the go a little below here. You can see here the load balancer here. Just go ahead and click the load balancer. Okay, here it is. It is being created, and you can see here uh, it has the ARN and it has the DNS name, and we need this DNS name to access our application. Okay, hosted in the web server. Now let's see the target groups. Okay, and if I go ahead and just click this target group, we'll get all the details about uh, the server uh, because that two server, two subnets, two EC2 instances is added. So you can see here. Uh, two ta uh, target uh, registered uh, EC2 instances, okay, and if you can see here uh, None of them are like two total targets to healthy zero and healthy uh, Zero so if I go here and do the health checks, uh, we have uh, no health checks are there so Right, so just wait for seeing target registration is in progress. Okay, so it has not been registered yet Just refresh it Okay, so we can see it here. Uh, our target has been registered now. However, the health status is unhealthy, right? You can see here unhealthy. Both of the servers are unhealthy. That means none of the servers, web servers are running. Okay, so what we have to do in our last video, the part one, we had installed the HTTPD server. The Apache web server was installed. Okay, now what we need let's go ahead and connect to the server so uh, connect to the both of the public server and start the httpd server manually okay um, so let's go ahead to the ct dashboard instance running so let me go and copy the first ip address of public ip go ahead and so switch i i Situation hyphen user other right just keep the IP address here. Okay, good. So um, we had installed already the HTTPD server, right? Now let me start it. So we have to use sudo system CTL start HTTPD. Okay. To check the status whether it is started successfully or not, just use status. You can see here the Apache web server is running. Same thing we have to do for our second web server. Okay, let me quickly connect to the second web server and get the IP address here. This is the second IP address, public IP address. Go ahead, put it here. Good. Now let's start the video. System CTL start. HTTPD. Okay, our service is now started, but we have not deployed any application. Okay, let me just add one index file to the root folder. Okay. So just go ahead and copy this contained HTML. I have written small HTML lines here, and uh, just go to the folder. It's called uh, just use VI editor to create a file. Okay. So use to the folder but www slash html slash index dot html i'm going to add it here okay so it is being added so to the second server i added so same thing let me do for the first server okay this is the first server so what i have to do use the same command sudo vi go to the folder www.html and index.html okay hit enter just put the file here okay and uh, the second server we had uh, give the, that server we had given as server one split this server to server two okay let's make it to understand uh, the load balancer is working perfectly or not okay just added server two less Go ahead and zip the file, come out. Okay, so in the both server, our HTTPD server has started. Okay, now if I go ahead and uh, to the load balancer target group and check the health, let's see what is the status now. 
click on here still it is says unhealthy okay so it will take a few seconds to uh, check the status and update it here okay now you can see here you can see here now it is healthy okay so we have started the server and added and deployed the application so it says it is healthy both the server as up to date now how to access those web servers or applications using that alb dns okay just go ahead and to the load balancer and uh, you can see here the dns name right here so we need to copy the dns name here go to your browser paste it here see our server is running so we are into the server 2 now if i refresh it you can see here my traffic has gone to server 1 so both the server 2 server 1 server 2 server 1 see it is going to the both the server so our load balancer is um, routing the traffic to the both public web server now you understood how to write the code to set up your application load balancer and how we can access it to it before moving out make sure you delete the resources whatever you have created using the terraform it's very important because if you leave it you have to pay for the resources being created because we have created almost around 21 uh, resources right so let's go ahead and delete all the resources so what we'll use we'll use terraform destroy okay i'll use auto upload so there is a typo it should be rra not ra rra good so what it will do it will just clean out everything whatever was created as part of this terraform okay hope you understood clearly uh, all the videos and all the sections uh, if you have any doubt or any concerns please do write me in the comment section below i'll just uh, help you to solve this or solve the problem if you have any if you have not yet subscribed my channel please do subscribe now so that you'll get notified whenever i add more videos on automations